part six, part six. This is part six. What is the greatest movie ever set in Las Vegas? Viva Las Vegas? Greatest movie ever set in Las Vegas. Con Air. Now, Con Air <laughs> ended in Las Vegas. It wasn't set in Las Vegas, but it was... It ended in Las Vegas. It ended in Las Vegas, but no, ever set in Las Vegas. 3,000 miles to Las Vegas. No, never saw that. that you mean 3,000 miles to Graceland. Ah, that's it. 3,000 miles to Graceland. You're right, but it was set in Vegas. Really? I never thought of that one. Yeah, they went to they went to Vegas all dressed like Elvis. I knew that. I had not. Yeah. I thought of something like Fool's Rush in. Sorry, but that was one of the, the Vegas. That was one of the worst Kevin Costner movies <laughs> ever made. What is the worst Kevin Costner movie ever? Worst Kevin Costner movie ever. Waterworld? No, absolutely not. Waterworld was a good show. It was a good one? Really? Yeah, I mean, it was a box office flop because they spent so much money to make it. Yeah. Uh, but it didn't make box office. But as a as a story and as an action movie, it was fantastic, in my opinion. Worst costume movie ever. Worst costume movie. Uh, I, 3,000 Miles to Graceland's got to be in, in, near the top of the worst movies Kevin Costner ever participated in. Uh, Postman, uh, you know, uh, it was it was kind of iffy to me, but I don't know. Let's see. I mean, he had a whole string of rocoms there, but I mean, message in a bottle and yeah, like uh, yeah. a couple of those. And I remember yeah. those because I remember uh, Roger Ebert and somebody else on the show, the worst of list, right? Tag Coster twice because his rocoms <laughs> tank so bad, right? But, you know, is a real com ever going to be the worst movie that you ever made? I don't know. Real coms are real coms. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, The Bodyguard, I mean, they actually made pretty good box office. Yeah. And he was actually pretty good in that. With, yes, he uh, was. When he used to. But uh, the scene with the silk scarf and the uh, samurai sword, was, uh, that, was, that, was, that was something right there. Where, you know, she's playing around with a sword, poking mm-hmm. with it. Yes. He very gently takes it away from her. Yes. And he, he explains to her how sharp it is and takes that silk scarf and drops it and cuts it in half. Like, holy crap. Nice. You could have scared him accidentally right there. Where but, the yeah, I'm, like I'm, I'm not a huge fan of Rokom. I'll watch Rokom because, you know, it can be a good story, but I'm probably not ever going to watch any particular Rokom more than once. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's especially a highly advanced Hallmark with better actors. No, yeah, no, I have to admit, some of Hallmark love stories or movies are not bad. I, I will watch. I will. I will. They are entertaining. I will watch a Hallmark love story from yes. time to time uh, because they they can be they can be a good show, but they all they're very formulaic and sometimes the actors are all like crazy. a choose your own adventure book. Yeah, yeah, kind of pretty much. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think here. Kind of a door of the explorer, you know. Ah. <laughs> you know that's below. You know that's way past my thinking level, right? <laughs> I stay at home. I watch game shows. Dora, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm at home. I'm. I, I watched Dora with the grandkids at, for you know years ago, and I was like, "Wow, Dora has only has one storyline, and they just they just change up the graphics." But you never watched Dora. No. You did not. Okay. No, I did okay. not. Okay, all right. I'm out of your genre. You think? <laughs> I still sit and watch old Garfield and Friends reruns and Rugrats reruns. Rugrats? Well, yeah, I know Rugrats. That's your genre there. 